Hello everyone, welcome back to OC Recovery's YouTube channel. Today I wanted to talk about, well, what I did was I went in the Facebook group and I asked, you know, what videos do people want to see covered? Uh, stuff they want to maybe learn a little bit more about. And someone asked, there was four answers so far. And the one I'm going to do now is, what's the difference between self-esteem and unconditional acceptance? I think this is a great question. I think it's one that's asked uh, a lot frequently, especially since self-esteem is something that's talked about among gurus and psychologists and psychiatrists and laymen alike. And I'm gonna break down why self-esteem actually gets people into trouble and why it actually doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So I can think of about 15 or 20 world-renowned speakers right now that talk about the importance of self-esteem. Now, if I didn't go through the experiences that I have been gone through and didn't read the myth of self-esteem and, and apply unconditional acceptance, I more than likely would have thought the same exact thing, but I need to actually start breaking this down into the, the what does self-esteem actually mean? What does it actually mean? So self-esteem in its basis, and I'm gonna talk about a couple misconceptions as well. Self-esteem means that one usually needs to do something in order to boost something about themselves. So they have to, a very simple crude example is, uh, they want to get money to make themselves feel better and look better. That's conditional self-acceptance. Another one would be uh, clothes and cars. They want a really nice car to make themselves feel better. This is conditional acceptance. Um, social media is a huge one. You know, a lot of people talk about that you need to boost your self-esteem in order to become successful. And to my knowledge, there's actually no real hard data that correlates self-esteem to long-term psychological su success in the way that people actually describe it. Um, I heard someone very, very famous talking with a very famous actor, um, this person was Matthew McConaughey, talking about how important self-esteem is in becoming successful, and they both agreed that it's the most important thing. And I would have to heavily disagree with it's more than likely the least most important thing when it comes to becoming successful. Now, patience, gratitude, grit, determination, persistence, adversities, these are all actual important things when it comes into actually bringing yourself into OC recovery. Self-esteem is not. Self-esteem makes people do crazy things. People will do all sorts of crazy, irrational, not healthy behaviors in order to boost up their self-esteem, but when they actually break it down and they realize they don't need this, and, and by the way, this is our innate natural conditioning to think like this. We are conditioned to think in a self-esteem manner. That's the way we're, we think. So let's break down a couple of myths and break down why the book, The Myth of Self-Esteem, was so important for myself. So the book, The Myth of Self-Esteem, is a very difficult read. It's not an impossible read, but it's it's a harder read than what most people want to want to go through. So there's a, a couple things out of that you could take out of that. You can read the book and say to yourself, this is a great opportunity to learn something about, um, you know, looking at the irrational beliefs I hold about myself. And we know that certain stuff such as harm OCD, um, uh, POCD, relationship OCD, self-esteem is talked about a lot intertwined with those incorrectly. So people will say stuff, you know, if you think of what self-esteem is, it correlates pretty poorly with POCD. You know, people think they have to have a, a good self-esteem in order to make themselves believe that they would never do such acts. But when a chronic fear is latched in POCD, uh, it doesn't quite work like that. I'm going to move into the other room because the dogs are outside and they're, they're continuously pushing that thing. So let me go into here and just put it right there. And let me shut the door. So it's super important to, to talk about that because... We have a that, like I said, an innate natural inboard tendency to think that we have to do something, we have to be a certain way in order to get a certain expectation. Now, the biggest misconception about self-esteem, so let's go back to the crude examples, and this is the question naturally that people ask first. Um, wanting to get a nice car or nice clothes correlates with making yourself feel better, so people ask, excuse me, well, what's the point of even getting nice cars or nice clothes? And that's a really good question. Now, there's a difference between having these things and accepting your life if you never get them, but that's not the way that most people see it. 
Most people think they need to reach or feel something in order to be something. So happiness is another one. People will say, well, in order to, to you know, be happy, X amount of things have to happen in my life. Well, that's not true. You might not be as happy, and happiness is a moving target that gets a lot of people into trouble. So we don't just wanna go off the basis of just happiness alone because that doesn't actually make a whole lot of sense. So when we start to break that down rationally, we start to see that accepting ourselves as a fallible human being for the way that we are. And there's a lot of people that say to me, you might look at me and say, well, what about wearing nicer clothes and having a nice haircut and keeping up your hygiene? Wouldn't that be considered boosting your self-esteem? And that's a great question because it can easily seem like that. Now, I like doing these things. I like taking care of myself. I think there's benefits to it. But if I never took care of myself again, if I got severely obese and if I let all my hair grow out, um, I would probably not enjoy that, but I could do it while still living a happy life. But that's not the way that most people view things. The way that most people view things is they think that they have to do a certain thing in order to reach a certain level of, say, an emotion. Um, and this is important. So in the myth of self-esteem, he basically breaks down why self-esteem is very subjective from person to person, why it can't be proven or disproven. So it makes it irrational in the REBT cognitive behavioral form. And it really is based off of stoicism and other Greco-Roman philosophies that look at things in a rational way to where you're like, okay, well, this doesn't actually make a whole lot of sense. And when you look at that, in those lights, you start to realize just how problematic that type of thinking can be. So let's say for someone who wants to go to the gym and build their self-esteem, right? This is what most people do, including myself still to a degree, but nothing like it was before I started working on my body dysmorphic fears. So let's say you go to the gym, you want to build your self-confidence, your self-esteem. Well, you've now put your entire self-worth on that one thing. And when that one thing doesn't exist anymore, you no longer have that self-esteem conditional response that you did before. So let's say, like I always say, you're at the fair and you're banging down on that thing, right? You bang down on the thing, it shoots the pin all the way up, it comes back down, and now you're like, well, shit. I mean, I don't feel good anymore because I no longer have this thing in my life that holds my life together. This is where conditional acceptance gets people into trouble. So conditional acceptance and self-esteem are basically the same exact thing. Um, it's not going to be too long of a video. I did want to break down why self-esteem is irrational and why it doesn't mean you can't prefer and enjoy things. We all have these doubts, right? Like, let's say you have ROCD, and this is just the way OCD works, and you're like, well, well, what's the point of even being in a relationship with someone if I could just not be in a relationship and no longer have those doubts? Well, that's avoidance. So you could still go to the gym and want to get better and get into shape and lose body fat and do all these other things while realizing it doesn't have to define who you are. But when you go to the gym with the idea that you're gonna build this self-confidence because you look good and, and, and you're naturally gonna feel good with those endorphins and everything like that, but it's when you attach it to your identity. And we see this with athletes in the Olympics and professional sports over and over and over again. They think, well, you know, if I don't do X thing, well then guess what? I don't feel good about myself anymore. And then they, they teeter off. You see all their healthy habits go to shit. So it is important to talk about this and it's not easy to hear um, because we're so conditioned to think in a, in a self-esteem type of way. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I will be covering the other ones. The other ones people asked were mental checking in the internal thermometer, which I have covered a lot, but I'll do another one. Um, stoicism with OCD and how perspective shifts have change. I did a really good video about a month ago that was 30 minutes. It's on the YouTube channel about all my perspective shifts. Um, and then nightmares and why dreaming and nightmares have no correlation with your OCD, but you have convinced them, convinced yourself that they have, and you have to treat your nightmares and your dreams like you would treat any other intrusive thoughts, accept their presence, even if it keeps you up all night and continue to work towards recovery. So thank you so much for watching. Um, I highly suggest reading the myth of self-esteem. I think that book would benefit everyone on the planet. Um, and what, it's not easy to adopt these type of philosophies. It's taken me a couple of years to even get to where I am. And I am nowhere actually at unconditional self-acceptance. And that's okay. I accept myself where I am in the journey. So thank you so much for watching and have a great day.